This is Cairo from iChat Innovation, Change and Entrepreneurship. Helping someone get back on their feet is good economics. See you in a few minutes. Someone special is coming. I'm here with Oleg Konovalov, number one influential coach in the world in the area of social media. And, and why leaders need to be visionary in the post-pandemic situation like that? The greatness of your success is much depends on the greatness of your vision. Pandemic didn't make a difference. It's revealed a difference between true leaders and managers and we are really good at finding problems and if we are looking for the problems we'll find them visionary leadership is a, it goes beyond immediacy it's about finding solutions which is very very different so visionary seal it's a gem yeah. it's a gem for for people for himself covid helped us to re, to realize this that we can't use old tools and practices to create the future. No one could build something on empty promises. Usually we say that we are making decisions, but the truth is we are about making a choice and to do things, you know, to do something which is challenging is always a decision and not many people are good at it, you know, and it's always great to see somebody coming for such conversations because this is about a decision or about to make a decision to, to live differently or to do something differently. Which is, which is incredible. Mm -hmm. So I'm really grateful when people come in for that because they, their decision is far beyond the making a choice. You know, it's very interesting. Hello, hi, this is Cairo from IceChat. Innovation, change and entrepreneurship, helping someone get back on their feet is good economics. Today our topic is up your game. How can you enhance teaching using advanced digital tools? I have someone very, very experienced that with me today is Miss Sumiko Chang. Hello, Miss Sumiko. Hi, 
Mr. Carroll. It's my pleasure to meet you, Mr. Carroll. Likewise, likewise. Good to see you. Wow, we got a nice uh, background over there with all the learning, the digital tools that you are using. Great. So how are you today, Subiko? Yeah, I'm great. Thank you so much. I'm very great. And okay. just having my class. Yeah. All right. I mean, your class. Yeah, you have one before and now you have one after this, right? Thank you so much for spending time. So today our topic is up your game. How can teachers out there, lecturers, enhance their teaching using digital tools? Now, before we get there, Sumiko, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Hi everyone, I'm Sumiko Ching Chunyi from uh, UOW Malaysia, KDU Penang University College uh, from Hospitality and Tourism Department. I'm the person that are very passionate uh, to uh, learn all of these blended learning tools and to incorporate and look for, develop those uh, new tools to incorp uh, incorporate into my uh, teaching. At the same time, I love to uh, explore more these uh, different type of uh, tools uh, so that I can enhance my teaching at the same time, I can engage my students in their um, learning and in their uh, normal uh, uh, class. So for now, due to COVID-19, so that's why a lot of uh, school and university, they're actually changing their uh, traditional uh, learning to online learning. So that's why UOW Malaysia is one of the university planning and is in progress switch to uh, online digital uh, uh, platform. Right, I mean, talking about that, Subiko, right? Digital teaching tools, what is it all about? You know, I, I see a lot of interest, euphoria about it the last few months, but I would like to hear from you. Uh, the digital tools is actually regarding the te technologies that we use in education. Like, they are more to tech-based uh, tools that we use in the classroom. Like, for example, we might using smartphone, laptop, desktop, uh, any uh, electrical device, and even uh, interactive whiteboard that we can use it uh, in the classroom. So, uh, I'm using different kind of multimedia materials and tools in my classroom and I am use it to create an interactive lesson. For example, uh, tools for online discussions, tools for a uh, presentation, tools for a uh, present, uh, for uh, teleconferencing, and etc. At the same time, I have used a blog, a uh, Facebook page, and a YouTube channel to share my information and notes. Yeah. Wow, so that's we have good. Different, different tools. Yeah, that, uh, different like. tools, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, just by by explaining it, I was my mind is struggling to pick up. Oh, this is blog. This is device. This is gadget, right? So, but the thing is, wouldn't I mean, in terms of content creation with all this, right? Wouldn't this put a lot of uh, pressure on the lecturer? And how does you um, use this to get the student engagement? There are two questions over there. Yeah, your thoughts. Okay, so for this is actually uh, for us to prepare all of this uh, blended learning tools, we need to spend more time. Be mm. frank, uh, be honest, we need to spend more time for uh, design the questions and some of design the presentations contents and we need to be uh, familiar with the tools that we select. Yeah, we can mm. uh, different tools is actually have different function. Like for example, wow. uh, Wakala is for us to um, uh, compile the information if you as a researcher you have a lot of journal a lot of data you need to compile then uh, Wakala will be the best uh, tools for you to compile of your journal of the information that you want and at the same time you can uh, include those article video blog like flip read video inside the Wakala so um, mm. you need to have passions there are passions to doing all of this consistently yeah. and action behind the passions yeah, you need to really create, add it, and some more compile the all the informations. Right. I mean, you mentioned a few uh, wakalat I saw on your Facebook, uh, Bansi. Uh, so, in terms of your favorite tools, right? What are those? Mm -hmm. Can you share with us a little bit more? Uh, if uh, it's quite, uh, it's really difficult for the one tools mm -hmm. because like mm -hmm. just now what I have mentioned, they actually have different tools for different functions. So for uh, if uh, for presenter, for presenter, mm. I would suggest uh, Microsoft Sway, Microsoft oh. Sway, then uh, Bunchy, then after that, Wakala, Flipgrid, and etc. 
so for what yeah. just now i have stated it's a good uh, platform for us to compile everything into one place but for a uh, bunch and microsoft sway especially microsoft sway it's very suitable for those uh entrepreneur and some more yeah. um, those presenter to compile mm-hmm. the information marketer sales marketing for them to compile the information before they present to the person and it's actually put more or less effort compared with our other tools because this already have a template provided and mm. uh, and use it at the same time another one more will be canva yeah canva also one of the presenter tools that are very uh, useful and user friendly yeah at the right. same time uh, you can use it to present especially as the educator or student yeah. right okay so you have a lot of tools uh, the the lecturer will have to have passion like you said i totally agree with that but how about student response? Is this uh, relative, uh, commensurate with what the effort that the lecturers have put and their passion? Uh, student passions regarding the tools that um, the tools that we introduce to them. Uh, some of the students they feel very excited. They feel very happy to uh, use all the tools that I have introduced to them. But at mm. the same time, minority of them they might feel uh, a little bit uh, stressed or. They will feel a little bit frustrated because of the connection issue. Yeah, because of mm. the connection issue, because of the coverage issues and comp- uh, computer uh, literacy skills. Yeah, this all right. we need to take into uh, uh, consideration. Right. So the last, the last few months, what are some adjustments that you or things that you know around you that to accommodate the student challenge? I think there's some internet going on. Can you maybe share with us a little bit more on this? Uh, regarding this challenge, uh, very very uh, grateful and appreciate because of uh, mm. our government, uh, they actually mm. collaborate together with uh, the Malaysia telecommunications um, company like DG Maxis, mm. Cellcom, and etc. They actually come up with one plan. That plan mm. will be given to uh, all the educator and some more students, mostly focus on students. They will mm. have opportunity to use one gig free one gig uh, daily then after that uh, since uh, 1st of July until 31st of December yeah so I they see okay all right so they uh, so in other words that will reduce the the burden the challenge of uh, you know getting data and internet yes stuff like yeah. that right so okay uh, some teachers are really into this I think you're one of them uh, like in digital tools so what next for them pardon yeah, what next for teachers? What next oh, for teachers? Next for already? Teacher. Hmm. So for next for teacher, uh, besides uh, teacher focus on the school-based learning, so my suggestions, they should focus more on the project-based, skill-based and some more social media like uh, mobile learning. Because um, uh, skill-based learning like Industrial 4.0, they actually require a lot of students, they been trained to be an innovator, to be trained to be a creator, problem solver, and as a cloud. So they mm. must have, uh, we should emphasize on their critical thinking, problem solving, uh, and some more uh, team building skills, and as a cloud. So uh, mm. another one more will be uh, social media. We should um, focus more on using like Facebook, WhatsApp, then TikTok, then after that, uh, TV, then, uh, and RTMs also can be one of the source for us to uh, exchange the information between um, educator and students. Then mm. our, for mobile learning, not uh, only focus on e-learning but uh, on mobile learning because of mobile learning is much more easy to access and we can bring our phone any place, anywhere and we can just download any documents or any video that we want. Then the last will be hybrid learning. Hybrid learning will be the future trend. Uh, lecturers or educators, they have to attend the physical class and students, they have to attend the class in person. Uh, at the same mm. time, lecturers or educators, they have to use uh, some of the video conferencing software like Canvas LMS, like Zoom, Skype, and etc. Conduct mm. during yeah, Right. I mean, I like, I like your explanation on the uh, where the student in the future, I mean, not too distant of future, we're going to be like makers, innovators, uh, creative thinkers, right? 
Therefore, uh, digital tools as uh, uh, consum uh, I mean consuming digital tools is not enough. We need to also provide them with the ability to interact, no, live as you're doing that, right? Is that is that what you're saying just now? Yes, because of uh, skill based mm. learning, we need to focus on up upskill their skills and retaining their uh, mm. potential and capability. So this mm. is why uh, we need to uh, train them to become a good educate, uh, good uh, uh, problem solver. Uh, thinker, communicators, and mm -hmm. even though become a positive value as a leader. Right. Yeah. yeah. Just just do a little bit of uh, some personal question to you, uh, Miss Sumiko. I hope you don't mind. How do you get into these digital tools, teaching uh, tools? How do you get into this? Um. This is because of past three. Uh, in the past three years. I realized about the potential of uh, online lectures and online blended learning tools application in Malaysia. And I start to explore and enroll in uh, some short courses like for example Microsoft or Wakalet and etc. And lately, uh, currently, in, uh, I'm actually enrolled some uh, short courses in Coursera and etc. Mm -hmm. So uh, I inspired, actually inspired by some educator, some mentor. For example, uh, Professor Karim, for example, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Jimmy, Mr. Aaron, Mr. Laura, uh, Mr. Mukti, and you, mm. Mr. Karu, for giving oh, this opportunity to me. So, uh, actually, I inspired by a lot of uh, the educator and some of the mentor. And they mm. guide me and motivate me to become a good speaker and good educator, and of course, my support of my institutions. Yeah, of mm. course, my, my institution then my boss, my family, friends, and students. Yeah, right. without students, without students, I can't uh, go through and even go for these extra months. Because mm -hmm. of my students, they're really very, very aggressive and always partic uh, participate actively in the class. Mm -hmm. So with right. the effort of my students and of course, uh, all of the people surrounding me, mm -hmm. then uh, this is why I, I really into uh, Blended learning, so that's why right. I'm a blended lover. Yeah, right. So you got yourself a blended learning lover, right? Yeah. Uh, blended all right. Lover. We talk about student response. Now, education cannot run away from assessment, right? Because I still remember a chat that we had during the uh, MCO with uh, uh, what you call MQA from Dr. Uh, As Asma. What was the name? So she said that. If you can prove that learning happen, then it's called uh, education, right? So how do you like in digital environment assess students to ensure there is learning? Um, actually, uh, after we introduce online learning, uh, we actually shift in assessment. We shift in assessment. We will focus more on project. We will focus mm -hmm. more on project based learning. We will focus more on field work. We will focus mm -hmm. more on uh, their competency and skill rather than theory and knowledge. And at the same time, mm. we actually change the exam patterns. Yeah, we actually mm. change the exam pattern, the as, uh, our assessment uh, uh, assessment way. So like for example, uh, before this, maybe some of the exam uh, questions that we have like uh, short questions, but now today we are trying to change to having some uh, case study. So from here, we will analyze the skills of the student through the experimental uh, project that they run through and some of the uh, encourage the way that they are uh, answering the question in a different format, in a different mm, way. They have to okay. think. Yeah, they have to observe the questions, observe the scenario, read the scenario, then after that come up with their own answers. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, have, I, have, Sorry. I have a question here from someone. Uh, I think she is in our private group. Her question is, there are many educators who normally say that they are too busy to explore all these advanced educational tools, tech tools, right? So what would be your response to them? For, uh, for those uh, uh, educators who have uh, claimed that they are having um, too busy to explore this, one of the fast track and easy way for them is they can actually uh, form a group. They actually, uh, I will encourage them to form a group in their uh, institution. 
then mm. uh, each lecturer will contribute one of the applications that they learn. Then from there, it's the most faster way for them to uh, pick up and learn a new tools rather than learning alone and uh, preparing everything alone. So teamwork is really very important in mm. this online lecture, online uh, learning and using right. those type of learning tools. Alright, I think that's, that's a beautiful way of uh, saying that uh, not just the learners, uh, the student learn using the tools together with their team, with their fellow learners, but the lecturer also have to pick up the, you know, the working in the team to learn the tools together. Because you're right, because the tools are evolving. Uh, I still remember in 2012, I started teaching on Udemy, but now Udemy is just so much, so much change already. I don't, I can't even recognize it. So that's a good point. So the thing is, uh, Ms. Miko, you talk about uh, assessment, right? And how do you see this being adopted? Because you come from uh, a private uh, education sector. How do you see this being adopted into a more mass uh, institutions, your your own thought about this? Um, the assessment, uh, just like I have mentioned, we have to change the pattern of our, our assessment, not only focus mm. on exam, then we should focus more on like field work and some more uh, practical activities. Yeah, practical activity like besides internship, we should uh, send some students to go for field trip, to visit some uh, company, some factory, to learn mm. how exactly the real world, the mm. uh, visual world, that how they run their, uh, run their, um, run their business. So mm. instead, we just uh, studying all the theory. Yeah, so we have right. to really go to the ground. Yeah, go to right. the ground and learn together with those experts. Right. Exchange the information. Okay, can I ask you another personal question? What actually you do in uh, UOW KU Penang? Can you tell us a little bit more about what you do there? Or what do you teach? And a little bit about the institution where you come from? Um, I'm actually from uh, UOW Malaysia KU Penang University College, Penang. Mm -hmm. Then uh, what I have been done uh, in the past seven years, mm -hmm. um, I'm actually uh, beside as the educator then I conduct workshop, then I conduct internal training, and at the same time, I'm always sharing some uh, blended learning tools with my colleague. Uh, the one that I learned it from uh, different different platform like Wakalab, Banchi, and Azakwa. Then at the same time, um, I'm helping uh, to engage uh, more students in learning, like uh, bringing students go for a field trip, then and at the same time, uh, studying a lot of uh, different different short courses from our webinar, then uh, at the same time from our internal trainer, mm -hmm. and I'm actually be a trainer in uh, internal trainer in our institution as well, and mm -hmm. uh, I did train uh, lecturers to uh, sharing my humble uh, opinion with my colleague and with my uh, friends from. Mm -hmm. yeah. So right. what I run it in um, my institutions. Right. Okay, someone commented, uh, segregating across educators, awesome ideas. Uh, I think that you hit uh, right at, at the spot over there with your explanation just now. That's great. So how do you, how do you see digital learning or teaching uh, grow post-pandemic? This will be con uh, this trend will be continue uh, after this after the post pandemic and because of the uh, the the sh uh, the shift of pedagogy because mm. now today uh, student center we have to know more about student needs we have to know more about student capability and their competency so this is why uh, flipped it. Uh, all the content is actually we are uh, sharing through or delivered through flipped the classroom. So uh, mm -hmm. the classroom is actually all the application that we use is actually 24 hours. Yeah, 24 mm -hmm. hours like the YouTube channels that uh, the video that we upload is actually 24 hours and we can deliver globally. Everyone mm -hmm. they can uh, access anytime, anywhere and it's very mm -hmm. uh, easy to access and interesting tools. Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, with this uh, flipped classroom, actually we are deliver the same, uh, same contents but the educator, the students, and even learner like us, we can choose uh, the correct choice 
to select uh, make a choice to select the tools that we want to use and at the same time uh, the way that we observe the uh, absorb the way that mm. we absorb knowledge will be different yeah we can right. choose the way that we want to apply in our project same mm. like students we have different different presentation tools but right. we have injuries to them but they can choose the suitable and the best presentation tools for their project yeah, right, right. Cheap or either PowerPoint mm. or either uh, Microsoft Sway and etc. Or mm. Okay. I want to ask you a little bit on, I don't want to be cal some calculative, but how does this cost all add up into, I mean, are you going to, like, you also take uh, some digital courses that like you see just now and all this software. Uh, I mean, how, how do you manage the cost? Or is there cost or there's, it's free, all of them? Your thought about this? Oh, the Microsoft uh, Microsoft course is free, Waklight is free, Microsoft Sway is free, Bungie mm. is, uh, they have free version and upgrade version, it depends on what type uh, of uh, um, version that you're planning to use, then mm. Coursera is free. So, mm. in uh, they actually besides this, they still have a lot like Udemy, Khan Academy, and some more uh, Oxford, they're actually offering a lot of different, different kind of short courses. And mm. actually, we learn a lot from uh, a lot of expert from Webinar as well. So mm. learning is actually for me. I feel that learning is actually uh, a gift. Yeah, uh, the capacity is uh, learn is a gift. The ability to learn is actually a skill, and the mm. willingness the willingness for us to learn is actually a choice. Yeah. So I I love this quote from Mr. Brian. Yeah, Mr. Brian mm. stated this before. So that's right. why learner they can make choices. They want mm. to learn or how much and how willing they uh, put their effort to learn. Yeah. So right. that's not learning. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that's a good quote uh, that you put there. I I'm glad that I managed to pick it up. So what would be something? So in other words, there are a lot a lot of the digital tools are free. You just uh, need to explore them a little bit, form a little bit of group among lecturers and learn together, right? So before that, there is one question uh, from someone. This must be in the private group. Uh, pr private group once again. How do you facilitate your students to work in teams while they are only allowed to meet online in the pandemic time? Please uh, share your thoughts, Ms. Sumiko. Okay, so uh, students they, they can actually running a, a, a project together. Like for example, I have one of the PDS project is they can record a video they can record a video and the students they can give a comment peer feedback to their friends like one of the topic that i give it to them is what they have what is the hobbies or what is the activity that they did during mco yeah so this is the topic that i give it to them then they can contribute their ideas and they can design a video design a presentations uh, uh to a uh, presentation slide then they share their talk with their friend and the friend they can contribute together as well and some of their friends uh, another topics that i give it to them is like for example they are planning to cook or bake uh, a cake so some of the friend they were looking for ingredient then some of the friend they were looking for a uh, recipe then some of them they were looking at the some of them they would practice the cooking skill and they mm. will just uh, turn on the video and they will uh, meet each other and they will just do it together and mm. like lately we have another one more project is they have to learn makeup yeah they have to come up with a makeup tutorial so makeup means like real makeup yes. eh? oh yes, okay real makeup tutorial so that's right. where what they have done is they actually meet their friend and they sharing mm. the makeup tools that they have and then at the mm. same time one of their friends the one the expert in Mecca, uh, all mm. the uh, all the uh, all the skills, she is very expert in uh, be a Mecca artist. Then uh, then mm. she will share her skill with her another two mm. or three or other friends that they have mm. in a group. Then after they did it, then they will record a video. Yeah, they will record a video to show their product. So this is how they collaborate together with them. Yeah, mm. at the same time they work compile the information and you will put it in Wakalab together because Wakalab, Microsoft Sway, Bungie, all of these applications, they will have a collaborations. Uh, uh, so you just need to send uh, a link 
to your friend, everybody can collaborate together. They can contribute their idea. That they can contribute right. their idea in the uh, platform, in the collection. Yeah, so this right. is how they collaborate with each other. Right. Yeah, good. Thank you so much. And there's someone who uh, gave a comment here. Gartatik icebreaking activity in the first week is crucial. I do the same thing with Sumiko too. Use Flipgrid. Right? Yeah. And there's someone, uh, Wendy Tan, uh, asking about how about for language and calculation subjects? Language and calculation. Oh, sorry. So sorry. So for language and calculation, I go through language first. For language, mm. actually, we can using Quizlet. Yeah, we can using Quizlet because Quizlet and Kahoot they have a lot of game functions, and mm. learning a uh, language. This is the best way for them to memorize the pronunciation, the words, the grammar, and using games, students they really will engage and they are really into the games because of they have the intention they want to be the winner. So that's mm. why uh, that will be actually provide a lot of opportunity for those uh, language uh, lecturers or educators. So they can use this kind of methods, especially mm. Quizlet. Yeah, especially Quizlet, I use it for uh, some of my activity as well. Then mm. uh, student, they can match. Yeah, student, they can match the definition and their, uh, and their um, uh, point itself. Yeah, they can match right. or they can type. Yeah, they can type the definition of the words. They will give the definition and they just type the point form. Yeah, so this is how they practice. For mathematics wise, I would suggest you use the uh, digital whiteboard or you can use the uh, Kahoot to come up with the like comparison games or you can using Mentimeter. Yeah, you can using mm. Mentimeter, you create the questions, then you ask them to uh, answer the questions, then they can respond uh, accordingly and play the games at the same time create a good uh, consider positive or competitive environment for them yeah, so right right uh, yeah i think i like when you said uh, you put in a lot of emphasis on creating some competition so that they are able they could they really want to win so that that makes the learning exciting and they forget about uh, you know the need to get involved uh, internet and stuff like that I, li I still want to go back to what you said just now uh, Ms. Sumiko about uh, learning actually is a, is, is a skill and willingness to learn is a choice so not just for the teacher lecturer also for the for the kids for the for the learners and for the students whereby I mean the teachers have spent so much time to design such a beautiful engagement with the digital tools so the learners must also be able to choose to learn you know, from the teachers, right? Okay, yes. final question to you. How do you convince teachers who don't want to start using digital tools? Mm, for um, educator and some more teacher, I know as, a, uh, as an educator, it's a really very, very challenge uh, moment for us to create a new teaching style uh, in uh, in this moment and some more engage students in learning, even at home. But I found that this is the best time for us to learn. Yeah, this is the best time for us to learn and apply it in our daily lecture because mm -hmm. education is actually changing. As uh, So we have to be more creative and we have to design a lot of interactive activity, games, so that we can go, um, uh, we will engage more and more students to involve in all the activity that we have. That's why from here also we will know more about the competency of the students. Like for example, mm. their emotions. For example, their uh, their competency of using computer. Yeah, computer mm. uh, literacy skills will improve. Uh, improve uh, not only for uh, students but also for educator. And right. as uh, Mr. Alex Gray has stated before, he has mm. mentioned that change won't wait for us. Yeah, change mm. won't wait for us. No matter you are an educator, no matter you are an entrepreneur or you are as a, a, um, a business uh, leader, then mm. we must always be more proactive. Yeah, we must mm. be proactive in upskilling and retaining people. Yeah, so that we can benefit from this uh, education, uh, education 4.0 
or Industrial Revolution 4.0. Yeah. Right, right. Okay, there's one question from Wendy Tan. She asked, do you use different tools or change tools frequently for the whole semester or only stick with one or two tools? That's a nice question. Um, hmm. I have to wait until uh, cannot we cannot change uh, too frequent. We can't change the uh, uh, blended learning too too frequent. One students will feel pressure. Another one more will be students not yet familiar with the the, the first uh, blend uh, blended learning tools. Then you change mm. to the second one is uh, they need time to absorb and they need times to uh, familiar with the tools. So mm. most of the time I will introduce different different tools. Uh, different uh, duration. So, like for example, right. ice breaking, I will introduce two or three. Then, uh, during uh, in the middle of the semester, I will introduce another one more or two more. Then, at the, before end of the semester, maybe I will introduce uh, another one more. Then, from right. here, you can see the progress. Yeah, from here, you can right. see the progress and uh, let them familiar with that. Uh, especially right. with right. the first semester students. Well, we can't introduce too much of them. They will feel confused and they will feel stressed. Right. So that's why cannot change too frequent. Because yeah. uh, for me, I feel that that uh, we are changing the world with uh, technology. But technology is just a tool. So mm. in case we want to motivate and engage the students, mm. uh, or motivating them, teacher mm. most important, not right. the technology tools. Yeah. So right. this is actually from Mr. Bill Gates. Right, thank you. This is a beautiful uh, explanation. Just one more question came, came here from Jerry Chong. Have you officially or formally assessed students on this platform? Would you consider their work as part of the final assessments in the course? Um, depends on the uh, activities that you give it to them. Like for example, mm. if I want my students to using Canva, if I want them to using Canva to design their brochures, design their smart goal, then uh, the design will be part of the marking criteria. Yeah, the design will be part of the marking criteria because this is also one of the process they learn. Besides mm -hmm. learning the theory, but they're learning about the technology, learning the tools. And mm -hmm. these they can apply in the future workplace. Because mm -hmm. after you graduate, you go to a company, then mm -hmm. uh, maybe you enter to a new company, enter to a new workplace, new environment. You might need to uh, using different different tools. You mm. can't learn it there. You should learn it now so that you are applied in future. So this is why right. I would always introduce different different related skill, uh, related tools for my mm -hmm. students to uh, maybe familiar. Then after right. they graduate, they still can practice. Yeah, I think that's uh, very thoughtful because uh, they, the student not just use it for learning, but later they can use them for you know, they work later on, right? They become more yes. productive. Huh? Someone yeah. suggested gamification, project-based learning, also a good tool uh, for during the pandemic, right? Okay, I take so much of the time already. I know there are a lot more questions and comments, but uh, I'm very sorry that uh, because Ms. Sumiko has a class after this, so, Ms. Sumiko, just one final word, final line before you leave, inspire them. Um, as what I have mentioned just now, mm. technology is just a tool. So, for uh, us, so we should inspire more students and most important is student center and mm. really understand the needs of the students at the same time, engage them in the activity that we provide to them. and. Uh, educators should be more uh, open-minded, open to the global, and receive more um, advice and some ideas from different different educators, from uh, teacher, from entrepreneur, from mm -hmm. uh, other educator, from not only our own institutions mm -hmm. but other institutions. That's why wow. I always uh, try to grab more information from Mr. Uh, Dr. Jai, then Do uh, mm -hmm. Professor Ari then Kiman, then and and a lot more. Yeah. So yeah. I have a lot of educators from different different institutions and they really right. inspire me a lot. Right. Great. Thank you so much, Miss Sumiko Cheng from UOW Malaysia, KDU Penang, for spending time. I hope you have uh, learned a thing or two from her. 
you can up your game. Thank you so much, Mr. Miko Cheng. Keep in touch. See you again. Yes, just give a big of applause. Okay, bye. Cheng. Thank you hey, so much. Welcome. Bye bye. Right, there is uh, Ms. Sumiko Cheng from UOW KDU Penang, right? So she shared a lot of tools just now. One is about from Wakala, Banchi, Microsoft Sway. I mean, I learned, I learned so much about, about that. But well, again, uh, there are so many questions here and we definitely would like to maybe, uh, you know, call Ms. Sumiko again for one more round. Maybe we can conduct a webinar, I'm not sure. I will have to check with her. She talked about uh, a lot about inspiring the students, inspiring the teachers. Uh, there's some assessment in digital tools. As I remember my own chat with Prof. Karin Kiman, Dr. Zohainis, and Prof. Dato Asma from MQA. That was in May. And now, fast forward in August, we actually have a more positive ride on digital learning. I'm, I'm very sure MQA all are looking and wanting to grow big into this. So therefore, students, teachers, educators, pick up the learning tools, the digital tools, so that you're able to inspire more students. And for students, you may have to struggle a little bit about the tools, but you will be able to use this as an advantage when you go into your workplace someday or even run your own business, right? So with that, thank you so much. This is iChat on, on Friday. Innovation, chat, innovation change and entrepreneurship, helping someone get back on their feet is good economics. Stay inspiring, help out others, inspire others. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Please like our page. Stay tuned. Next one in two weeks time, I'm bringing someone most very more important in a very unique field. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.